Now we will talk about disk scheduling. So we talked about CPU scheduling, and now it's time to talk about disk scheduling. The operating system needs to schedule the requests that are made for uh, a given uh, device. So each device has a waiting queue, and if there are multiple requests in that queue, the system will need to schedule them. <coughs> so these requests here, like we said, uh, you know, a, a disk address is a cylinder number, <coughs> track number, and uh, sector number. So these numbers here are the <coughs> number, the cylinder number. Because the cylinder number determines the head motion. So we are focusing on the head motion. Okay, so so going in the wrong direction. Um, okay, I'm going to show the picture again. So the cylinder number determines the head motion. So this is cylinder zero, and this is the last cylinder here. So if, uh, going to the last cylinder will, will require more head motion. So if we have multiple requests to multiple cylinders, how should we schedule them to minimize the head motion? Well, in CPU scheduling, the first algorithm that we have studied was first come, first serve. And this also applies to disk scheduling. So we will look into first come, first serve. And in first come, first serve, so these are requests for cylinder numbers. And assuming that our head is here, and we have this, these requests in the queue. Uh, so the first request is 98, so the head will move to 98. Then there is a request for cylinder 183. The head will go to cylinder 183. Then there is a request for cylinder 37. So the head will move all the way to cylinder 37. Then there is a request for cylinder 122. So it will move to 122. So I, I think it's obvious that this algorithm is not an efficient algorithm. Assuming that you have a you know, bunch of cylinder accesses that can be to arbitrary requests for arbitrary cylinder numbers. Uh, obviously, this will first come first serve. The, the head will be moving back and forth, or can potentially be moving uh, uh, back and forth and making uh, uh, lots of uh, movements that, are, that can be avoided. Now, in CPU scheduling, we looked at first come, first served, and we found it a very inefficient algorithm. Uh, to minimize the waiting time for CPU scheduling, what did we consider? What was the algorithm that we considered? Shortest job first. Hmm? What's that? Like shortest job yeah, first. Yeah, shortest job first. So now the counterpart of shortest job first here is what? What would that be? What that? Would it be shortest distance? Shortest distance, what, do, what does that mean? It's like uh, it would try to minimize the distance it would have to go for the next uh, block. It would have to go to, to, to service the request that is made to the closest, to the closest yeah. cylinder. Yeah, so uh, in the context of disk scheduling, it's called shortest seek time. Shortest seek time first. So if I'm at 53, I will look at these requests and find the one that is the closest to 53. And among these, the closest to 53 is 65. So I service 65. Then the closest to 65 is 67. So I service 67. Then the closest to 67 is 37. <coughs> so I go to 37. So basically, I service the request that is the closest to where I am, the closest to the current position of the head. This will minimize head motion. But now, just like shortest job first in CPU scheduling, shortest seek time first in disk scheduling has the same problem that we had with shortest job first, which is what? Yeah, 
starvation. So in this case, if say we are here at 65 or something, and we keep getting requests for 60 something, close requests to 60. And if we keep getting requests for 60 something, 60 th something, we'll get stuck here. And all the requests for the farther positions will never get uh, serviced. So we will get starvation. Any priority-based algorithm will result in starvation. Now, in order to minimize or to uh, avoid starvation, people came up with a, a, a scan, uh, this algorithm, an, an algorithm that is based on scanning. So it would go and scan the disk in both directions and service the requests as it encounters them. So it will, if the head is currently here, it will go and scan and service any request that it encounters. <coughs> so it will encounter 37, it will service 37. Then it will keep scanning, it will encounter 14, it will service that. Then it will scan in the other direction. So, and it will encounter requests and it will service them at it, as it encounters them. Now this scan algorithm, obviously there will be no starvation because you know, it's uh, the number of requests that will get serviced on the way is going to be finite. So uh, each process uh, will not have to, uh, to wait for an unbounded number of other requests. But the problem here is that if the head is here, and the head will start moving back in the reverse direction and servicing requests, when it starts moving back, will it be servicing more recent requests or older requests? Older. Hmm? older. Yeah, when it moves back. Recent. So which ones will be more recent? The ones here or the ones all the way here? Yeah, the ones here will be more recent because when the head was moving here, it, it serviced all the requests that were here. So now the requests that are closest to where we are are the most recent ones. While we may have requests over here that may have been waiting for a long time. Right? So requests on the other end have been waiting for a long time. While those requests here, we know that they have not been waiting for too long because we have just serviced, serviced this uh, position, okay? So if the head moves back, it will be servicing the requests that are more recent and leaving those older requests waiting for a long time. That's why people came up with an algorithm that will resolve this problem by instead of moving back and servicing requests while moving back, go all the way to the other end without servicing any request and service those requests that have been waiting for a long time first. So this is what we call C-scan. So C-scan would service requests as it goes then it will go in the reverse direction, but instead of servicing requests in this direction, when it goes in this direction, it will never service any request. It will just go all the way to the <coughs> end so that it gets to those requests that have been waiting for a long time. It gets to them as early as possible and it starts servicing them. And this is called C scan, C stands for, uh, uh, for uh, cyclic scan or circular scan. Because it's, you know, when we move, when we get here and we move all the way to this point, it's like, you know, imagine folding this plane, imagine folding this, imagine this as a sheet of paper and you fold it such that this uh, end meets this end, right? 
So you will be folding this like it will be like a, a, a cylinder. And then when it becomes a cylinder, you are basically scanning the disk in a circular manner here. So you are going this way and then to this end because they will meet. If we fold this and form a cylinder, this end will meet this end. Okay? So that's why, that's why it's called uh, C-scan.